Welcome to our annual Agronomy Day. Uh, we have a, a pretty good lineup here today. So uh, you'll get your nutrient management credits that you need. You'll get your pesticide credits that you need. Make sure you see Sheila and Jamie there in the back of the rifle range. Make sure you get signed in uh, for everything. Make sure that everybody gets done. Uh, first thing I want to say is um, thank you for what you do. You make my uh, job uh, pretty easy. And I thank all of you for all of your support. It's very important that we all work together and try to figure out these regulations and some of the new research that's, that's coming down the pike, so thank you. So we're gonna get started this morning with uh, Dr. Ron Ritter. A lot of things I wanna cover in the uh, short period of time I have. There's always, of course, a lot of new products and things out there. There's a lot of new weed problems we're gonna talk about. You have plenty of time. Okay, uh, and I do wanna spend a a minute or so on the possibility of losing atrazine. Can you imagine that one? Uh, once again, a lot of new products. Soybeans, we want to mention a little bit about horse wheat and all these new pig weeds that are coming in. And if time allows, I want to talk just briefly about uh, small grain and some of the things that are coming uh, about, particularly the, the resistant chickweed. Now, I love retirement, actually. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have grandkids out there. This is my son-in-law, Tony, and there's my grandson. And he was about a year old there. This is Father's Day, and I had to break him in early. We were picking crabs and drinking Heineken there, just having a ball. But like I said, if you, if you don't have any grandkids, get some grandkids, because it's just so much fun to train them how to pick crabs and drink beer. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about politics. Back in, uh, in uh, 2011, uh, there was two, house, uh, two bills put in there, House Bill 659. It would actually prohibit the use, distribution, or sale of atrazine or pesticides that contain atrazine. And then in the Senate, there was a Senate Bill 582 to study the feasibility of prohibiting the use, distribution, blah, 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 or sale of atrazine. Now, why am I even bothering talking about this? There has some, been some discussion in today's legislature about bringing these bills back, okay, in the 2013 legislation. So think about losing atrazine. What has atrazine in it? Anybody familiar with these products? Anybody ever use Bicep or Lumax or Lexar or any other ones listed in here? I mean, these are our key products that we necessarily need. And I'm gonna talk about some of the other products that are coming in place. And if you don't have atrazine with them, they're basically useless. Okay, so back in uh, about 10 years ago, Syngenta actually came in with a product called K-Mix. It was a blend of Dual and Callisto with no atrazine. Why did they introduce it? There are areas of the country where atrazine is actually banned. There's parts, I believe, uh, Wisconsin and Michigan, there's certain counties where they actually have banned the use of atrazine. Now what's interesting, that same year, Syngenta came in with their blend of dual atrazine and Callisto, which a lot of you guys are probably familiar with Lumax. So then as we got into the 205, 206, they came in with a new Lumax called Lexar. Most of you are probably familiar with Lexar. I just briefly wanted to mention the fact that what are we actually getting out there? You know, back in the days where we were using a couple quarts of bicep, we were getting about 1.3 pints of dual, a good load of atrazine. When we came in with Lumax, we're getting a very high load here of dual, but not so much atrazine. So with Lumax, what do we have to do? Got to add some more atrazine to it. And then of course, Luxar came in, you got this load here of dual, 1.3 pints, which is comparable to do the uh, bicep. 1.3 quarts of atrazine, which is just about adequate. Uh, but my gut feeling, uh, and, I, and I haven't priced these things out, but when you look at Lumax, you're getting that high load there of, of dual for what? For your grasses, your nutsedge, your pigweeds which are coming in. Uh, and what do you do here? You don't have enough atrazine, so what? Throw in another pint or two pints of atrazine. It's relatively cheap. Uh, and so where I'm coming from, between these products here, Lumax, provided you throw some extra atrazine, is probably a good product of choice. Now what you're going to see in, in 2013, they're going to change the names on you, okay? We used to have Lumax and we used to have Lexar. 
Now we're talking about Lumax Easy and Luxar Easy. They have not changed the formulations. And then there's another one called ZMAX. What is ZMAX? It's going to actually replace KMIX. So we're just kind of swapping apples for apples, not oranges for oranges. Still a blend of Dual and Callisto, okay, with no atrazine. And like I said, if we get that legislation out there and we lose atrazines, this is going to be a product of choice. Uh, unfortunately, when you lose the atrazine, you lose what? Your Morning Glory control, your Cockleburr control, your Jimson Weed control. Some of our work this past year down at the Y, uh, untreated check. Here's your uh, Lumax Easy, very clean. Your Lexar Easy, once again, very clean. And then here's your Z-Max. It's a little hard to see, but all this stuff in here is what? It's all morning glories. Like I said, once you lose the atrazine, a lot of the large seeded broadleaf weeds come into play. That being the case, you're looking at a two-pass or even a three-pass system. All right, let's talk about what else is new. I'm going to take it by company, just alphabetically going from uh, BASF down through Syngenta. Most of you should be familiar with this Kixor line of products, or particularly the product called Sharpen. Uh, they've got Optil and soybeans. They've got Integrity, which they've changed the name in corn. And of course, they've got Sharpen. Any Sharpen users out here? There's got to be a few of you use Sharpen, yeah. Uh, where does it really fit in nicely is for, for mare's tail control up front. And we're going to talk about the recipe for that in a few minutes. The chemistry of Sharpen, we call it PPO chemistry, it's really nothing new. The, um, anybody ever use Blazer or Reflex? That's what we call PPO chemistry, so it's not re relatively anything new. What's unique here, it's very low use rate, uh, two to three ounces in corn, and we'll talk about soybeans in a few minutes, uh, with no fear of carryover. The key thing here really with Sharpen is an early pre-plant for mare's tail or horse weed control, particularly in corn or even in soybeans. However, it does have good pre-emergence control of a lot of other weeds like pigweed, lamb's quarters, ragweed. Uh, but once again, if you've got morning glory issues, and most of you do, you're still going to need the atrazine, okay? Uh, I mentioned integrity. They now call it verdict. It's actually a blend of what? Of Sharpen? Plus Outlook, Outlook is a product like Dual, it's for grass control, okay? Uh, wide use rate here, 10 to 18 ounces for corn. However, in the case of soybeans, we'll talk about that in a minute here, we're down to five ounces. Untreated check, once again, some of our work down at the Y. You can see we've got ragweed, we've got cockleburr, we've got all kinds of grasses in here. You're sharpened with Prowl, it could have been Dual, it could have been Outlook, it could have been Harness, doesn't really matter. Your grass product of choice. Here's your verdict, your blend of Outlook and Sharpen. Now, as we got into 2012, the spigot doesn't always work. Now what do I mean by that? Do you always get rainfall when you need it? If you're using any pre-product, it could be Bicep, it could be Lumax, it could be Luxar. Harness Extra, do you need rain to activate it? Absolutely. Did we get the rain here? No, we didn't. So like I said, when you don't get the rain with these kind of pre-emergent products, you can have a complete disaster. Now, anybody heard of this product called Zidua? Sonny? It's, uh, it's been around, we've been looking at this product, good gosh, I bet you at least 10 years. Uh, they finally have a corn label uh, it was actually developed by a company called Kumei, uh, but BASF now has a, a working relationship with them as well as a couple other companies. Uh, they're hoping to get a soybean label. I, I would say in the next week or two we will see that soybean label. Probably next year a wheat label uh, for corn, one and a half to four ounces. The problem you have is your rotational crops, and, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Here's Zidua and Atrazine. Like I said, it's, a, it's primarily a grass product, but it does have broadleaf activity. But once again, you still need what? Atrazine added to it. Here's Zidua and Sharpen. Uh, once again, if you don't get the adequate rain, or if you've got morning glory problems, you're still going to what? Need the Atrazine. 
Now, both FMC as well as Valent are going to have blends of Zidu with some of their own products. Um, but once again, what are we looking at here? If we get a wheat label for, uh, for Zidua, ryegrass control, uh, once again, corn and soybeans, we've got a corn label, we anticipate a soybean label. The problem we have though with the rotation is that with the, with the exception of corn and soybeans, with the exception of corn and soybeans, there's going to be an 18 month rotational restriction. So if you're going to be following any of the, your corn or your beans with any vegetable, we're looking at an 18 month rotational restriction. And I'm going to come back to that in a, in a few minutes. Anybody here of Balance or Balance Flex? Some of you may have heard about it. Now, we have not had Balance labeled in the state of Maryland. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes why. Uh, however, I'm going to go to this bottom bullet here where I'm saying we're hoping to get a state label for 2013. We now have a label for Balance Flex in the state of Maryland. Okay, we now have a, a label. Now, it's a bleacher. Any of you guys ever use Command? Ever see the borders of the fields or everything's all bleached out from the command drift? This is going to be the same problem. Wherever you spray it, if you get any drift, everything around the borders of the field is going to be all pretty white on you. Okay? It's like I said, it is a bleacher. There are other formulations out there with balance. One's called Corvus and another one called Prequel from, uh, from DuPont. Right now, it's going to be Balance Flex and Corvus labeled in the state of Maryland. I do not believe we're going to have a label for Prequil. Now, here's Balance Flex. Some of our own work this past year at the Y. Uh, what's actually growing in here? These are all morning glories. Okay? We took care of everything with the exception of morning glory. So, what's the take home point? <laughs> Got to get atrazine. Okay? Take home point. Got to get atrazine. Here's Corvus, same thing. All this green stuff in here is all morning glories. Got to add the atrazine. Here's Balance Flex with atrazine. Oh, look it, no morning glories. How about that? And same thing with Corvus and atrazine. No morning glories. I'm going to keep harping on this point, is that if that bill is introduced, keep your ears open, keep contact with your legislators. We really don't want to have atrazine banned in the state of Maryland. We need it. It's cheap and it's effective. We've had that product, good gosh, 40 years maybe? I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a necessity for, for farming in the state of Maryland. Okay, now initially balance was not labeled in the coastal plains, coastal plains state because they were worried about groundwater issues. Uh, Pennsylvania did have a balance label. However, due to the Palmer amaranth, and I'm going to show you some pictures of Palmer here in a few minutes, the states down south said, hey, we need balance, okay? We need balance because of the pigweed problems. And like I said, Maryland is not only considering a state label, we actually have a state label for balance and Corvus. All right, Dow, has anybody heard of this Enlist program? A couple of you must have heard of it. Uh, what are we talking about here? It's, it's basically tolerance to a new 2,4-D. It's called 2,4-D choline. It's low volatile, low order, reduced driftlet and spray drop. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I spray 2,4-D, I, I like to smell it. I mean, maybe it's just me, but it's like, kind of like a perfume out there. I mean, once you spray it, you go, oh yeah, 2,4-D. This one, you're not going to know it because it's, it's a low odor. You're not going to say, Jesus, did I spray that 240 or not? Who knows? Now, right now, what's going to happen, in the case of corn, they're going to stack it with tolerance to glyphosate. So, in other words, that the corn that you're going to be buying that has this gene in it, it's not only going to be resistant to 240, it's going to be resistant to uh, glyphosate. And the same thing goes for soybeans, which I'll mention here in a few minutes. What you'll be buying, the product will be called Enlist Duo. Once again, it's a blend of this 2,4-D choline plus glyphosate. And I would suspect, I, I, I really don't know, but I would suspect when you buy the corn, you're going to have to have some kind of a written agreement that you're going to be using the Enlist Duo, which God knows how much it's going to cost, but these things are going to be married together with an agreement. Now, I know it's going to happen down the road. A lot of you are going to say, you know, I could buy generic glyphosate and a real cheap 2,4-D and put them together and spray my corn or my beans. And I know that's going to happen. 
But trust me, you're going to be in a lot of trouble with the two 4Ds that are going to drift who knows where, to your neighbor's yard, the vegetables down the road, the watermelons over there. Um, so like I said, uh, you're going to probably be tied in here buying this product with the, the genes for uh, the resistance in corn and soybeans as well. DuPont, the only really new thing there, uh, their blend of Matrix, Clisto, and a safener, they're going to be pushing this product called Instigate. I'm not sure how the pricing on that thing there. It's going to be a post-type product in, in, in corn, uh, but that's really only the new thing with, with the DuPont products. Outside of the basis blend, I know that some of you guys have used basis in the past. Uh, they, they're getting rid of basis. They're coming in with this product called basis blend. We used to talk about a third to a half ounce of the old basis. Now we're talking about eight tenths to a 1.25 ounces of the basis blend. Uh, I'm not going to get into any of that stuff down here. I'm just saying, this is the new product, Basis Blend. Now, is it going to alleviate any of the problems we've seen with Basis? Now, what do I mean by problems? Cold, wet conditions. You're, sometimes your corn can be a little stunted, can be a little purple. You dig it up, the roots are kind of pruned a little bit. Same problem, okay? Same problem. It's, it's just Basis in a different formulation. FMC, as I call FUMCA. Any cadet users? Got to be some of you out there have used cadet. I mean, if you haven't used cadet for morning glory control in, in, in I don't care whether it's corn or beans, it's a great product of choice. Uh, like I said here, post use both in corn and soybeans, which means if you get a spray tank of glyphosate and cadet, guess what? You can use it on your corn and you can use it on your beans, okay? You don't have to worry about cleaning out anything else like that. Wide window of application with corn, two leaf up to 48 inches. Soybeans, first try fully through full flowering. And like I said, the key thing here is if you've got morning glories, and you've been using glyphosate over top of your Roundup Ready beans, your Roundup Ready corn, uh, this is an option for you to think about. Use rates, once again, tank mixing with glyphosate or even or, or with uh, Liberty. I generally say about a half ounce of product per acre, half, pounds, uh, half ounce of product per acre. All right, here's straight touchdown. It could be any glyphosate roundup. Take your product of choice out there, a lot of generics. Look at the morning glories in here. See all that stuff? The touchdown just did not do the trick. Right next to it, touchdown with a half ounce of cadet. Boom, just absolutely blew the morning glories away, okay? Same thing in soybeans, here's touchdown, see this green stuff in here? Those are morning glories, over in here. Touchdown with cadet, these things are dead, okay? These are dead morning glories, carcasses if you want to call them that. So like I said, if you've been having issues with, good morning, with uh, glyphosate and your morning glories, and cadet does take out other things, not just morning glories, but it's a good product of choice. Now, what else are we going to be seeing with FMC? Okay, two other things are going to be out there. They've got a product called Anthem, which is a mixture of Zizua plus Cadet. And they've got another one called Anthem ATZ, which is Zizua, which we talked about from BASF, their Cadet, and Atrazine. Uh, they did receive their corn label, so we do have uh, both these products labeled for corn, and I would anticipate in the next couple of weeks, we'll see this one labeled for soybeans as well. Here's Anthem down in soybeans, followed by Touchdown. It does, it does a really nice job. Uh, the Cadet doesn't give you a whole lot of residual, but a, a little bit of residual. And here's your Anthem ATZ. This is some of our work at the Y this past year. Uh, like I said, 100% control. So you're going to have a lot of opportunities out there for, for products, you know, from the Biceps, the Lumaxes, the Lexars, the Anthem ATZ, Harness Extra. But they all have atrazine in it, okay? We need the atrazine. Syngenta, okay. You've probably heard this one that the, the Gramoxone Inteon is out. It's replacing it with the old Gramoxone SL. Unfortunately, the, the Gramoxone Inteon had uh, alginates in it. So if you decided to um, take a gulp of the jug, you would throw it up, you would poop it out. So with the new product, we don't have the alginates. So if you've got a friend that you want to get rid of, now you've got a product of choice, okay? 
I've talked about Halix in the past, and, and I have to review this one one more time. I really like Halix as a, as a post product in corn. Uh, what are we getting in there? 3.6 pints, we get a pint of dual, 24 ounces of touchdown, and 3 ounces of Callisto. So you've got three different modes of action in here, okay? Dual, the touchdown, and the Callisto. Uh, and particularly in the case of you no-tiller guys, you know, if you're running your Princep 24D early, you plant, the corn comes up, you shoot it with your, with your Halux. Like I said, it's, it's a nice product of choice. Uh, and what I like to see added to it, guess what? Atrazine, okay? I like to see atrazine added to it. Once again, down to Y, untreated. Here's Halux at four pints, 3.6 to four pints. Just a beautiful job. This is conventional. Uh, here's Halix with atrazine. Once again, I like the atrazine in with it. Why? Two reasons. Thing number one, it gives you better burn down because you got the atrazine in there. Thing number two, if you've got morning glories, you got some atrazine in there to give you that late season morning glory control. Here's Roundup. Same, same, same plots. Uh, no residual. So what happens? You get some late season lambs quarters or morning glories or whatever the case may be and right next to it for late season these are halix and atrazine look how clean that is so like i said i i like this particular program now we've got all these what we call hppd inhibitors we've mentioned clisto which is part of the lumax and the lexars uh, it's also labeled post-emergence we've had impact which is from amvac and right now, the same product is called Armazine, which is being sold by BASF. And then we got Laudis and Caprino. Now, where do, they, where do they really shake out? I'd say when we think about, I mean, broadleaf weed control, they're all pretty good. But in terms of grass control, Impact or Armazine provide your best control on giant foxtail in particular. And the Impact and the Armazine are actually labeled for sweet corn as well. Okay, so if you're growing any sweet corn, you got a great product here. I say Laudis and Caprito in the middle, Callisto is the least. However, we do have, of course, fall panicum. We've got some Texas panicum out there. And if that's the case, what we're seeing, which is really weird, but Caprino gives you good, to excellent control of your panicum species. So they, they do differentiate. But once again, in terms of overall best gra uh, grass control, your impact or Armazon. All right, let's switch gears a little bit here, talk about soybeans. A lot of things I want to mention here, the mare's tail, the pigweeds, new products, new technologies. All right, as of the end of last year, 393 documented biotypes of, of weeds resistant to different chemicals out there, okay, different herbicides. 210 species, 123 dicots, 87 grasses. We got a lot of resistant weeds out there across the world, okay? Now, busy slide, this is just the number of resistant biotypes here on the left. Here's your chronology here. And what I want to point out, this is your, your, this line here are your ALS inhibitors. What are they? Things like Harmony, Harmony Extra, Accent, okay? That's starting to level off. Here's your triazines, that's leveled off. But what I want to point out is this little blue bar right in here. Those are your glycines, and that's just starting to pick up. And what are your glycines? Glyphosate, okay? And what's interesting, when you think about resistance, there's a water hemp, which is actually a pigweed. They've got it out in the Midwest, it's working its way here. Just, just be patient, it'll be here, okay? Unfortunately, this thing, they've now found out parts of the, the Midwest in Illinois, it's resistant to atrazine, your PPO inhibitors, we mentioned Sharpen, glyphosate, Roundup, your ALS inhibitors, Harmony, Accent, your HPB inhibitors, Impact, Callisto, you know what they're doing out there? They're actually cutting these things by hand and putting them on a hay wagon and hauling them out of the field, the water hem. That's how bad things have gotten out there. There's really little to no chemistries that actually control this thing. Just be patient. It'll be here. All right, let's talk a little bit about your, your Roundup Ready course introduced in 96. First case reported in Delaware of horseweed. Today, five countries, 20 different states with horseweed resistance. Now, look at the chronology here. We found there, there's now 24 weeds, okay? 
From 96 to 2000, in that five-year time period, we only saw two. The next five years, we found seven more resistant. The next five years, 15 resistance. What's going to happen between the next five years? I mean, look at, look at, I mean, two to seven to 15. I mean, we're just sitting on the tip of the iceberg right now in terms of weeds resistant to, uh, to glyphosate. A little bit of uh, what's going on out there. The um, horseweed states are in orange, okay? What's, what's troubling is the Palmer amaranth, which is these light yellow areas down here, uh, is making its way up into Maryland. We have actually have sites in Maryland now where Palmer amaranth, it's a pigweed. Uh, the water hemp here is in blue. Where, where are our prevailing winds? They generally go west to east, so that sea is going to be blowing into Maryland. Just a matter of time. Uh, and this field is one of the first fields we saw resistance issues with glyphosate. It had not one, not two, but three applications of Roundup. The more Roundup you put on it, the bigger it got. It's like fertilizing it. So if you want a nice uh, nitrogen source for mare's tail, just put some glyphosate out there. So what can we do? Okay, and we've mentioned this many, many a time, the, the old agronomy 101, uh, tillage and crop rotation, chemical rotation. Uh, if you can't rotate, maybe think about Liberty Link soybeans. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Liberty the herbicide does a nice job on it. Uh, uh, my preference here is Gramoxone 2,4-D early. Save that glyphosate for your in-crop application. Uh, we also have Liberty as a possibility as a burn down. And I'm going to talk about first rate here in, in about 30 seconds. Uh, it, it has been working, but it ain't working anymore. And think about it. What still works on mare's tail? Oh, 2,4-D. Been around longer than atrazine. Developed in the 1940s during World War II. Still works today. Uh, do we have weeds resistant to 2,4-D? Yes, we do. We've got maybe a handful, but nothing like we're seeing with, with Roundup. The, what's interesting here with first rate, they actually increase the rate. You can actually go up to uh, six tenths of an ounce per acre. However, let me get out on this last bullet. We now have pockets of glyphosate and, and ALS resistant mares. I've, I've walked countless fields on the shore where they sprayed it with Roundup. They came back and sprayed it with first rate and it did absolutely nothing. And I know some of you people out there have probably seen this. So unfortunately, it was a good tool at one time. At this point in time, it's probably going to be a useless tool for mare's tail control. I've had countless calls last summer. You know, I sprayed first rate, and the mare's tail looked like, like nothing happened. I said, oh yeah, they're resistant. Hello. Now, sharpen, of course, we mentioned it in corn. It's also labeled in soybeans. However, your use rate here is really one ounce per acre. And if you've got coarse type soils, Less than 2%, we're looking at a 30-day pre-plant, okay? A 30-day pre-plant if you've got coarse-type soils. We mentioned Verdict earlier, that blend of Sharpen and Outlook. Uh, corn, a high use rate. However, in soybeans, because of injury potential, we're only looking at 5 ounces per acre. We've got some blends out there. I'm just going to mention them because you'll be hearing about these things. One of the blends is called Optil. It's a blend of Sharpen and Pursuit. Uh, does it really fit anywhere? Probably not. And then the other one that's out there right now is called Optil Pro. It's actually a co-pack. Uh, you get your Optil and then you get your Outlook in there. Uh, why even bother with this particular uh, co-pack? For the guys that have the pigweed problems. You got the outlook in there for your late season pigweed control. Untreated checks, some of our, our work down at the Y. You can see the mare's tail here. Here's sharpen in an ounce. This went on two weeks pre-plant. Okay, one ounce is sharpened, two weeks pre-plant. Just absolutely tore out the, uh, the mare's tail that we have there. And those are glyphosate resistant mare's tail. Once again, your check here, your, your sharpen on the right. Here's your roundup at a court. You can see some of the mare's tail in there. We wounded him, but we certainly didn't kill him. Your sharpen here on the left, your roundup on the right. So like I said, it's where I, personally, where I see sharpen fitting in, if you know you've got 
resistant, glyphosate resistant mares tail, uh, and you, you're maybe a little cautious about using 2,4-D. You got a housing development, you got somebody planting something else nearby, you're worried about the 2,4-D drift. Here's a product you don't have to worry about in terms of drift or volatility, okay? Um, so it's a product that I think is going to have a tremendous fit for uh, those of you that have the, the uh, glyphosate resistant mares tail problem. Now, Betty Crocker, whenever you, have any of you guys ever looked at a Betty Crocker cookbook? Oh, come on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You know, there's recipes, and, the, and Betty has these recipes, because if you're really going to make a cake, if you really want to have a success in that meal, you've got to follow the, the, the directions. I mean, it's as simple as that. And it's the same thing with using Sharpen. From what I've seen over the years, using Sharpen, an adjuvant is required. Okay, what do we need? We need it. My preference is a methylated seed oil plus ammonium sulfate, okay? Now, the, the label mentions you could alternately use uh, UAN. My preference, if I were Betty Crocker and I was telling you how to take out your mare's tail with Sharpen, would be with your MSO plus your AMS, okay? You've got to package these things together with, with your ounce of Sharpen. All right, any Liberty Link users? There's got to be a few of you out there, I'm sure. Um, a great crop, okay? It's a, we've had a lot of tremendous yields with our Liberty Link um, uh, soybeans. Untreated, some of our work down at the Y. Uh, here's Roundup, two shots of Roundup. We wounded them, we certainly didn't kill them. These are, of course, your glyphosate resistant mares tail. Once again, untreated, the Roundup, where we wounded them. But here we came in with Roundup as a, as a pre-plant knockdown, did not do a thing on the mare's tail, came back with Liberty. These are Liberty Link soybeans. And you can see how tall these mare's tail were. A lot of these guys are up about knee high. Just absolutely blew them out of the water. Your Roundup's over here, your Liberty's over here. The Liberty Link soybeans are extremely tolerant to this product. Um, here's 22 ounces followed by 22. If you overlap, you got 44 ounces followed by 44. We have never seen any injury with applying Liberty over top of Liberty Link soybeans. Extremely tolerant to that herbicide. So, uh, Liberty herbicide, I don't know why they keep monkeying around with names, but it, it became Ignite 280. Now it's back to Liberty. Uh, can use in crop or is it burned down? Not both. Why do I say that? What happened with glyphosate? What happened with Roundup? We used it as a burn down. We used it in crop. We used it in the fall. We kept using it, using it, using it. And the weed said, hey, give me more Roundup. I like that product. So, like I said, in the case of Liberty, we do not want to see resistance develop. Okay? If you're going to use it as a burn down, that's it. Preference, if you're using it, of course, in Liberty Link soybeans, use it. Uh, in crop, 22 ounces per acre. All right, now, questions for y'all. Anybody have any pigweeds that are growing and green when you're ready to cut your beans? Anybody? Oh, come on. Because I'm looking for a test site, actually. Uh, <laughs> Jenny, I'm going to leave that one up to you to get me a volunteer. <laughs> There's so many different pigweeds out there. These are actually one, two, three, four, five different pigweed species. They, I mean, the seed heads all look a little different, don't they? Uh, and what do we actually have here? We've got Palmer amaranth here, pal. We've got red root pigweed. We've got smooth pigweed. We've got water hemp over here. So like I said, there's a lot of different pigweeds out there. Um, and the ones that are coming in right now from the south is Palmer. We've got a lot of locations for that. And we've got a couple locations in, in, uh, in, uh, on the other side of the bay where water hemp's coming in. Now, are those two resistant to glyphosate? We don't know. And that's why I want to, I'm looking for a test site. Here's your red root. It's a real compact kind of a seed head. You know, it's not real branchy. It's all kind of enclosed. Uh, why do they call it red root? When you pick it up, it's got the red root. Uh, here it is at, at late in the season. It's putting out seed. It still has that compact head. 
You've probably seen some of these beasts on the sides or edges of your fields. Here's smooth pigweed. It's not as compact as the red root is, okay? It's a little bit open. They, oh, they look pretty close. Uh, I think I got the next one here. Yeah, see how compact the red root is versus the smooth? It's a little bit more open here. At harvest time, and here's Palmer. Uh, the, the thing about pigweeds, they're very sexy. And what do I mean by that? The pigweeds actually have male plants and they got female plants, believe it or not. And so how they get together, I can't go on camera and talk about that. The other neat thing about Palmer, you'll know Palmer because it, it, am I getting filmed? Oh, I mean, anyway, it's kind of like that, you know, it's kind of flipping you the bird. You'll know you have Palmer when it's flipping you the bird out there later in the season. And here's tall water hemp. This one you can see, it's, it's all kind of spread out. It's got branches everywhere. It's not all compact like the smooth or the red root. Once again, your, your water hemp is kind of a branchy type of a pigweed. So, like I said, we've got, these things are all coming in. And a lot of them are resistant to not only glyphosate, they're resistant to a lot of your ALS products like Classic and, and Harmony. Now, in corn, I'm really not worried about it. So if you think you've got a Palmer or a water hemp problem out there, the products listed here, your Lumax, your Lexar, your Basis Blend, all do a tremendous job in controlling it. Uh, Post-emergent, your, your 240s, your Banvilles, a lot of things out there. So like I said, I'm not really concerned about it in corn. However, in soybeans, um, because it could be resistant to not only glyphosate, but your ALS type products, things like Canopy, even though it's got Sencor in it, sometimes we've seen some problems with it. Uh, one of the safer products we have out there is a product called Sonic or Authority First. It's a blend of first rate and authority. Uh, untreated, here's Dual and Sonic, conventional ground, 30 inch beans, but like I said, season long control. Syngenta has a couple products out there. One's called Sequence, the other one's called Flexstar. Uh, what is Sequence? It's actually a blend of touchdown and dual. Uh, why even think about it? Because you've got the touchdown in there and you've got the dual in there for that late season pigweed germination. Post shot of Sequence in, in, in soybeans here. Later in the season, like I said, it just gives, gives you that season long control. And like I said, they've got another one called Flexstar, a pre-pack of touchdown and reflex. Two modes of action. Once again, if you've got the pigweed coming up, you've got the morning glory coming up, you know the touchdown's not going to work. Uh, we've got a product here as, as a blend of touchdown and reflex. Flexstar, some of our work down at the Y. Here's touchdown. Look at the morning glories. Here's your Flexstar, three pints. Just absolutely obliterated the morning glories. Why? Because of the reflex that's in there. Three and a half pints, just overkill. All right, anybody hear about a product called Warrant from Monsanto? Some of you might have heard about it. Oh, it's nothing really new. It's what we call a acetochlor. What is acetochlor? Harness, okay? You probably heard of harness or harness extra. This is an encapsulated acetochlor. Uh, post the soybeans up to two quarts. And they just recently received a pre-emergence label. So you can actually use acetochlor or at least warrant as a pre-emergence product in soybeans. Label for both non-Roundup Ready as well as Roundup Ready soybeans, okay? Oh, that one got burnt out down there. Oh, well. Touchdown, morning glories. Here's touchdown and warrant. Not that warrant does anything on the morning glories, but look at these soybeans. Do they look right to you? They look a little cupped, a little funky. See this cupping? See that cupping in the soybean? I got one more, I think, here. Yeah, here we go. A lot of this cupping in here is from the warrant. It's not like I had sprayer contamination. But I've seen countless fields where they've sprayed warrant with your Roundup, and you're going to see that same kind of cupping, that same kind of necrosis out there. So expect it. All right, here's what's interesting. Valen has a product called Fierce, and I just checked my email this morning. 
Fierce just got a label for soybeans on the 28th of February, okay? So what is Fierce? It's a blend of Valor and Zidua. We've mentioned Zidua before. A lot of you are probably familiar with Valor. They got their corn label, seven day pre-plan in 2012, and now they have a soybean label which just came out yesterday, okay? Three to four and a half ounces. Once again, you still have your rotational restrictions. Um, you're gonna be limited to what? To corn or beans, corn or beans, not vegetables. Vegetables will be 18 months. Here's Fierce, um, not too sporty in, in our plots this past year, why lack of rain? But, throw a little bit of what? A little bit of atrazine in there, and what do you get? You got good weed control. I'm gonna keep talking about that one. Now, one of the things I'm concerned about with Fierce, it's a blend of Zidua plus Valor. And both products, under the right conditions, cold, wet conditions, you might actually see some stunning out there. Uh, and these plants actually never really recovered. So it's going to be one of those products called Fierce on Soybeans if you get the cold, wet conditions, okay? Now, Monsanto and BASF are working on the dicamba-tolerant crops. Uh, we're talking here corn, maybe 2015. However, soybeans, maybe in 2013 or 2014. What's dicamba? Anybody ever spray any Banvel? Anybody ever spray any Clarity? All right, you ready to start spraying that on your beans? Anybody got any vegetables growing on the eastern shore? Anybody have any housing developments nearby your beans? This is going to be a lot of fun. I wish, Sonny, you know what? I wish I could go back to law school because you're going to need me once you start spraying this stuff, guys. Okay? At any rate, we had had a coated, pro uh, uh, coated product the past couple of years. It was actually a mixture of glyphosate and clarity. They are going to call it Roundup Extend. It's going to be called Roundup Extend. Once again, it's going to be one of these buy-ins where if you buy the, the crop that has a tolerance, you're also going to have to buy the Roundup Extend. Now, what I heard two days ago, they're not going to put clarity in there. It's going to be a whole totally different dicamba formulation that's not going to drift and not going to volatilize. Yeah, right. Um, what are we looking at here? Wide window of applications pre-emergence to R1. Uh, of course, uh, we're talking about probably using different uh, tips on your sprayers. And what's interesting, they're also going to have you be able to buy their di dicamba by itself. And it's going to be called Extend Max from Monsanto, and this one's going to be called Ingenia from BASF. So like I said, some new names, Extend Max and Ingenia. This is going to be your straight dicamba, low volatile formulations, maybe. Like I said, we had some of this stuff out at, at the Y uh, the past couple of years. Here's uh, your, what we call DTS or dicamba tolerant soybeans. Roundup and Clarity, we put out two weeks pre-plant, planted the beans, didn't see any issues there. Uh, here's dicamba tolerant soybeans, Clarity at a pint, early post, once again. The beans love the dicamba. Here's your experimental, the, the blend of glyphosate and Clarity. Uh, once again, early pre-plant and early post, saw absolutely no injury whatsoever here. However, once again, when you put the warrant in there, you're going to probably see some issues. This is warrant with the uh, glyphosate dicamba gig. And once again, you get that cupping, that crinking, that, that whatever the case might be. So no matter when you use the warrant with whatever product of choice in beans, expect that crinkling. And then uh, lastly here, Dow, uh, I mentioned this in corn, they are going to have what we call their enlist weed control system for soybeans. Tolerance once again to that new 2,4-D, uh, it's called 2,4-D choline, and what you're going to buy is going to be called enlist duo, which is a blend, once again, your 2,4-D choline and glyphosate, uh, and once again, it's all going to be a tied in package. If you buy the beans, if you buy the corn, you're going to have to buy this product of choice. It's not a matter of you're going to be going out buying cheap 2,4-D and cheap glyphosate and spraying it. You're going to get into trouble. All right, if I got... 
R of, I know, I'm on, okay. Just real quickly, I'm not going to talk about everything here. I just want to quickly mention the, the chickweed issue. Uh, most of you guys are getting ready to spray Harmony Extra. Some of you probably already sprayed some Harmony or Harmony Extra. Uh, does a good job. You've got two ALS products in there. You've got regular Harmony and another one called Express. These are all ALS materials. Uh, primarily a broadleaf herbicide. Of course, we, we've got the grasses out there, the Italian ryegrass and all that other stuff, Poa annua. But let's think about what, what are we spraying? Okay, you're spraying Harmony or Harmony Extra. These are all ALS or sulfonyl urea type products. You're using your Osprey for what? For your ryegrass control, your POA annual control. It's an ALS. Uh, Dow has been called PowerFlex. Does a great job in a lot of things. It's an ALS type product. So, if you're using your Harmony and your Osprey together, you got the same chemistry. Okay, you got the same chemistry. And what's happened, most of you know it, we now have ALS resistant chickweed. You should be familiar with chickweed. This guy had three applications of Harmony Extra on it. Three applications. And it's kind of like the horseweed with a glyphosate. It was like fertilizing it. Okay? It's like fertilizing it. Now, what can we do? Okay, we've got the old standbys. We used to use 2,4-D and we used to use Banvel before we had Harmony and Harmony Extra. Uh, you know, half to three quarters of a pint, the low use rate of Banvel here. The problem you have is that we're so used to using Harmony and Harmony Extra with that wide window of application. Two leaf stage, but before flag leaf. I mean, that's a wide window there. However, with your 2,4-D and your Banvel, uh, after tillering but before joining, that can be a 10, 12, 14 day time period. So like I said, we're so used to using the Harmonies that we, we don't have that luxury uh, using these products. The only last slide that I want to mention, we do have Starine or Starine Ultra out there. Uh, once again, we have those pockets of ALS resistant, common chickweed. The only thing that I have successfully used, and it's not 100%, Starine Ultra is not 100%. 70, 80% if you're lucky, uh, 0.4 pints per acre. Now, they used to have 120 day recrop to soybeans. Uh, we, I just recently got that changed to a 90 day recrop. So like I said, no fear of using Starine Ultra uh, for your chickweed control. With that, I'm going to shut down and take any questions, any quick comments that any of you guys may have out there. I realize we covered a lot of material in a, in a short period of time. Question? What about finesse? Whoopsie, sorry. What about finesse? Pre-emerge wheat? <clears throat> the question was, what about finesse as a pre-emergence wheat product? Anybody here ever go to Atlantic City or Las Vegas? And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's what finesse does for me. It's, it's a very inconsistent product. Now, when it works, particularly for things like Italian ryegrass, it's 100%. But I'll tell you, I've had, every other year, I've had failures with it. It's just not a, a, a successful product. Now, the other thing about finesse, it's an ALS material. It's a sulfonylurea. So if you've got chickweed that's resistant, finesse is not going to do a thing for you. So, I tried some this year. okay, did it work? Good. I mean, it's... I, it, you know, it's, it was just something to try. Oh, yeah. No, I agree with you. I mean, I said... It's a lot cheaper than going back to Liberty 2.8. Or it might be. Right, right, right. Pre-emerged soybeans. Right. Like you were in the Right, right. So, yeah, the common was using finesse and, and getting some air scale control out of it. It, it, it can do that. Yes. It's something to try differently. Yep, I agree. I agree. Okay. Question? We've got a uh, speed well in our week, too. What are you going to put on that? The question was speed well and wheat, what can we do about it? But that's, that's a tough one to kill. Um, there is a product out there called AIM, A-I-M, that's labeled for small grain. Uh, I haven't used it on speed well, but the people that have used it said it does a fairly good job. It's, it's kind of like Star Rain Ultra, it's not 100%, uh, but you got to get it out there early. That's, that's the thing with speed well, with AIM. It's, it's, a, it's a contact type product, it's not a systemic. Uh, the comment was putting some bandwidth on top of the speed well. 
it'll, it'll set it back, but it's, once again, it's not going to kill it. It'll set it back is about it. That's a tough one to take out. So, good, good, good question. Question, comments? Go ahead. Can you talk about using cheap, uh, round up the cheap for a day? What makes it any worse than the expensive stuff? I'm sorry, we had a little fire here. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, you cheap glyphosate? Hey, good comment. What makes the, the cheap 2,4-Ds and glyphosates any different than the, the new stuff coming down the road? The, 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 the new products that they're going to be introducing are apparently have little to no volatility. Uh, and that's the problem you run into with, with Banville. Uh, it, it, even though you can buy an LV formulation, low volatile formulation, if conditions are right, it's going to move off that field, okay? And that's, that's where the new stuff, the new 240s that we're talking about, uh, are going to have that reduced volatility. So when you spray it, it's pretty much going to stay where you put it. So, I, and I realize, and I know for a fact, once we get the 240 tolerant crops or the Banville tolerant crops, a lot of you guys are going to be buying the cheap Banvilles and the cheap dicambas and cheap glyphosates and using it out there. The risk you run into is, is the volatility problem. Uh, and if you've got some non 24D crops or non 24 or Banville crops nearby and they, and they get damaged, uh, you might be good friends with your neighbor today, but you won't be tomorrow. So. Are they going to stand behind the good stuff? Are they going to stand behind the good stuff? That's a really good question you'll have to ask them. My, my comment uh, would be that if it's, if it's applied under the right conditions, they will stand by it. Okay, I mean, if the wind's blowing 20 miles an hour, it's 95 degrees, that stuff's going to move. So, there was another question back. Go ahead. The question was cockleburr and corn. If you, okay, you guys ready for, you know what I'm going to say. If you keep your atrazine rate up, Atrazine will take out the cockleburr, okay? If you keep your atrazine rate up, pound, a quart and a half to maybe even two pounds, if you got bad cockleburr, atrazine will take out cockleburr, okay? Pre-emergent. Question back there. Do you know any weeds are resistant to steel? Do I know of any weeds resistant to steel? Steel is actually a blend of, um, it's got prowl in it and it's got two. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about tillage. Oh, tillage. <laughs> No, there's, there's a herbicide called steel. Any, no, no, that's, a, that's one of the best tools out there. Get a, get a plow and a disc and a, yeah. Well, I, you know, I had a slide up there. I, I talked about agronomy one-on-one, tillage, crop rotation. Um, you know, those are the things that worked 40, 50 years ago. Uh, we're going to be going back to that. No question in my mind. So, question. Two four D's been around a long time. There's been a lot of exposure to it, but there, there's a similar product that has caused serious problems in the back in the uh, past called two four five D. Uh, how is the relation of these to each other? Good question. What is the relationship between two four D and two four five T? Two four five T was actually one of the products uh, used in Vietnam, where they did a lot of defoliation, and and the problem we it's not really a problem. What they were doing then in, during the Vietnam War is that we use like maybe a quart or a pint or something like that. They're using like 20 gallons per acre just to totally defoliate stuff. Now, one of the problems with 245T, it contains high amounts of dioxin. And dioxin is actually a cancer causing uh, product that if you get it into your body, it, eventually you might actually get cancer. The 240s that we use today do not have the dioxin product in it. So that's one of the major differences. The other thing is 245T also was, it not only had two, it was a, um, how can I explain this? If you ever had chemistry, you can look at 24D, it looks like this. And so the 245T had something just a little bit attached to it. It was a little bit different formulation than, than the regular 24D. But like I said, the, the key thing about it, it had the dioxin, which today's 24D don't. So. Any other questions, comments? And I am looking for a pigweed site. If any of you guys think you've got some pigweed that your glyphosate is no longer working on, 
or your classics or harmonies are not working on, let Jenny know, okay? Because I'm really, we're, trust me, it's just a matter of time. We've got some Palmer Amaranth on the lower shore that's creeping up. Some of these guys out there have no idea what to do because and they're, they're actually thinking about doing what they are doing down south and in the Midwest, getting a bunch of kids out there with machetes and whacking that stuff and putting on hay wagons and hauling out of the field before it goes to seed. Uh, I don't think we want to do that here in Queen Anne's County. I don't think I've got enough kids here to do that. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks so much. My dad and I have the aerial spraying business out of uh, Greenwood is our main base, and we are based out of Ridgely, as, all, as many of you know. But uh, we fly out of there and uh, got a strip up to Churchill and out of Massey Airdrome. And uh, we do spraying, cover crop. We also do uh, helicopter work. Uh, Paul Gunther helps us as well with consulting and um, many other things that Paul does that uh, he's just he's been a big help but uh, I have much to say but anyway we're here if you need us and uh, for spraying or seeding or what have you but I uh, appreciate it thank you well good morning ladies and gentlemen yeah I'm like Jeff Peter. I didn't know that I was gonna have to get up here and talk today and I, I've heard that you know um, somebody told me it's better to remain silent and appear a fool, then open your mouth and remove all doubt. So I'm going to sit down now. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank Jenny for asking us to be part of the program. We really appreciate it. Thank you all for what you do in the ag community, in the ag world, and also for your business. But um, uh, a little bit about Atlantic Tractor. We're out here today with, uh, we have two specialists with us. If you notice our table, we have a farm site specialist, Chris Schoonover, and we have Jamie Meekel with the Green Seeker technology. He also does a lot of sprayer work for us. So, and a lot of people wonder what farm site technology is and just a little bit about that is, you know, we live in a ever-changing world and technology is really, really growing rapidly and we've got to keep up with it. But uh, the farm site philosophy is that, you know, you have you and your equipment, we have all this technology and we're the third link there to bring, help you bring all this together and make all that work. So if you talk to Chris out there, we can help you with that. With Our gator is out there where we can map fields for you and uh, set it all up so that it, all the information at harvest is uh, reported directly to crop insurance and you get payments quickly and it's just a neat process. But uh, we, we do thank you all. We appreciate your business and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Good morning. Thank you. And uh, introduce myself as the new uh, representative for the Delmarva for Valent USA. Worked for another company for a number of years and uh, started with Valen here in August. Uh, represent uh, products that you're familiar with like Valor, Domark, Fungicide for corn, soybeans, and also our newest one, which Ron was just talking about today, uh, Fierce Herbicide, which we just got a label yesterday for soybeans. So uh, Ron spent a good portion of his comments today talking about weed resistance. We're excited with our lineup, number of products that you have used over the years that can really help you manage weed resistance. The Valor, the Valor XLT Fierce, soil applied in beans, and then we have products that I'm sure you've heard of in the past, Cobra, Resource, and Select, all of which we're working with Monsanto uh, in their tie-ins to manage resistance and the uh, Roundup Ready Plus program, so you can earn up to $6 an acre back using some of the Valent chemistry. Uh, and with our new label for Fierce, I just wanted to comment we did get a significant reduction in a lot of our rotational intervals to uh, follow crops. So uh, just came out yesterday. We'll be getting the word out on that, but should give you a lot more flexibility trying to figure out how to manage things like uh, Palmer Amaranth and Mare's Tail in soybeans. So appreciate your business in the past and be happy to answer any questions inside later. Thank you.